I don't know what it was. He's walking upright like a man. Sightings in and around Vermont. Bigfoot sightings across New England have been reported. Red glowing eyes, about seven feet tall. Red eyes, big old fang claws coming out through. Three inches long, you know, just sharp as they could be. There has been another UFO sighting flying over the Royal Botanic Gardens. There are 500 UFO sightings in the world every month. The truth is out there. Last week, Lisa yes. and I went to, uh, what was it? Ikea. Round one? We went to Ikea. No, we oh, didn't go to our to round Ikea. one. Ikea? Did you just say Ikea? Yeah, we went to <laughs> Ikea. Um, uh-huh. Because we needed to get more, like, Lisa wanted to get more decorations, and I was looking at getting more shelves for this room. Yeah. Um, mainly to fill in that one area I was showing you earlier with, like, the white pine shelf, because it doesn't fit the aesthetic of the rest of the room. Yes. Um, but I did that that primal of all sins and forgot to measure when I came here. When oh, I went there. no. Um, and I realized that I forgot to measure after the fact. I also look, forgot the bags at home. But uh, that's beside the point. So it was a rather uneventful day. I had uh, what I might describe as the most disgusting bowl of soup in my life. <laughs> um, it was basically watery salsa because it was oh, tomato that's soup. Good. Um, so there was that, uh, but we, uh, we went to the Paramus Ikea. Yes. Um, and afterwards, Lisa was like, oh, so what do you want to do now? And I'm like, I don't know. And then I like looked out the window because there's a window at the Paramus Ikea. Mm -hmm. And I saw this place called Westfield. Yes. So Westfield, for those of you who don't know, is a mall. And I got there, and there was a parking garage that had those, like, parking spaces that tell you if there's a car in the parking space or not. We enter the store, and enter the mall, and it yeah. doesn't look like any mall I have literally ever seen in my life. The first <laughs> store that we see is a yeah. DJ2 Phantom store. All it does <laughs> is sell DJ2 Phantom. <laughs> not only that yeah there was a pretty decent number there was more people in that store than i would expect to be in a store uh -huh. that exclusively sells dj2 phantoms <laughs> they had uh louis vuitton um they had uh oh they had like all the like hot, hot couture type stuff like yeah very there was a neiman marcus there mm -hmm. I was just like, what? In the mall? <laughs> the mall was packed. Yeah. Like, absolutely packed. Like, That's And weird. the other thing. The other thing? Yeah. Here's the weirdest thing. Uh, their food court yeah. was called the Bistro. Ooh. Uh, we didn't eat there. We ate at, like, a, a New Orleans-style restaurant. Yeah. Um, I did see that you posted my local mall online yes and it said it looks as if they're considering carpeting the food court <laughs> yes yes so let's let's just compare and contrast the westfield mall with the hudson valley mall yeah <laughs> no i so the story behind that is yeah. i was trying i had to go to therapy uh-huh and i forgot that it was at eight o'clock and not six and i thought it was at six thirty. gotcha so it was too long of a period it was too short of a period to go home Mm -hmm. It was too long of a period to go literally anywhere of value. <laughs> hey, <laughs> what's that supposed to mean? <laughs> you know what it means. Uh, so, and it was like, it was too short notice to be like, hey, Brandon, want to hang out for 20 minutes? <laughs> <laughs> you probably could have, because I've... Uh, um... In between, like, manically creating things, whether it be audio or, like, w wood or, like, any other stuff, I've been binging all of the anime. So That's I'm, fair. I'm caught up with Shield Hero. I'm caught up Jesus. with Promise Neverland. I'm caught up with that time I was resurrected as a slime. I'm caught Good up. Good lord, you <laughs> devoured that. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Wow. Wow, you churned right through that one. Uh, I caught up with uh, Twin Star Exorcists. 
<laughs> this is all for like Lord. two weeks. Well, I, I guess next on your list is the Castlevania. Yes. It's real good. Uh, so it's based off of Castlevania 3 uh-huh. and another one, the one that has Alucard. I forget which one it was. Okay. Um, but the Belmont that's in it yes. is Trevor Belmont. Mm-hmm. And let's just say he's phenomenal in it. Oh, man. That sounds um, good. I love the games. I've got them. I've still got my original NES and the Castlevania game, and I've still got that game and the other ones on the um, that uh, emulator uh, that you gave me. Yeah, I put every game ever on that, basically. <laughs> so, uh, I've just realized we've, we've been talking for five minutes on this, yes. and uh, I don't think I've finished a complete thought. No. No. That, that, that's fine. Everyone knows what they're getting into when they... If it's not... If we're not reading off the copy, expect only the first third of a thought. Yeah, pretty much. <laughs> it's kind of just been my life for the most part. Um, yeah. But I do want to finish the the train of thought about the uh, the mall, the carpeting in the mall. Yeah. Uh, that's nightmarish. Yes. Also, there are only two eateries left in that mall. Oh no! Or right, wait, let me guess. Let me guess. Let me guess. Let me guess. Yep. I'm gonna guess East Walk. Yep. Because you mentioned that in the comment. Yep. And the other ones, there was a subway. Nope. The, no? Okay. I'm trying to think. The other one, there a Sabaro, maybe. I'm thinking pizza. There is a pizza place. It's a Savannah's pizza. Ah, Savannah's. I miss yeah. when they had Nathan's. Yeah, that's been gone for a long time. Yeah. That, um, but that being said, when I walked, I was like, oh, good. Like, I was walking through, because I had, I had thought that they had already carpeted it, and I was walking through the mall, um, the desolate mall that has, I think, 15 storefronts open? <laughs> uh, I, I was like, oh, good, I can see tiling where the food court is. At the very least, they still haven't carpeted it over. And then I round the corner, and I see a bunch of carpeting. <laughs> and I'm like, oh, God, no, they're going to carpet the food court. What monsters are they? I think they would do well because the stores, other than Target and Best Buy, they're, they're their anchor stores. Everyone else left or moved to the other mall that's right next to it. Yeah, well, so, it's the King's Mall. It's the That's an open-air mall. Though. Yeah. It's like a strip mall. Yeah, I, I like that. But if they're carpeting it, they means they won't. Because I might have mentioned this to you in the past that I thought it would be a good idea. Keep the anchor stores, keep the Best Buy, keep the Target, keep the Dicks. Mm-hmm. And make everything else a giant paintball arena. Because that would be so fun. Carpeting would be terrible for a giant paintball arena. That's why I said that. that uh, I know that's why they're not going with it. And I think it's a real good idea. Pull up all that carpeting. Get big inflatable obstacles. And uh, just paintball. Oh my god, that would be so good. It would be so much fun. I'd get lit up though. Cause you see, I know, I know myself. Uh-huh. I'll try to be all stealthy. Then my glasses will fog in the mask because they ine- they inevitably fog yes. in the mask. Yes. Oh. Um, okay. So so so. Okay. So you you know Mark, right? The yep. He uh yep. for those listeners who don't know Mark, we played D and D with him uh or, or at least used to, and he uh he one time brought a whoopee cushion, hit it in his shirt, and we played. For we were probably like ninety minutes in, and then <laughs> someone got up to go to the bathroom, and then they sat down, and it was just under their chair. And we were like, "Did you just have that in your shirt this whole time?" <laughs> he was like, yep. "I, I'm still flabbergasted yeah. that he. It was the first time that I've ever seen a whoopee cushion ever actually work, yeah. because it was the the amount of dedication." It's all dedication. That's also if people are wondering why my Instagram is donkey hands. Yep. His his uh, familiar was a donkey, and at some point in time, I forget how it happened. Maybe it it, it was it was, it was a donkey some... with human hands at some point in time, and it was amazing. Well, well, the hu- it had human hands and human feet. Yes. And the reason it had human hands and human feet was because they're like spectral things, and yeah. he had misspoken saying that the the donkey was holding something. Oh, also, by the way, it's literally Ed Murphy's character from Shrek. But that's yes. a whole other thing. Um, the donkey <laughs> was holding something in his hands, he said. 
And then I think you drew a picture of a donkey with hands and feet. Yes. And then it was all over. <laughs> oh, yeah. Uh, and on that note, yeah. I would like to say, welcome to Cryptopedia, an exploration of the myths and legends that haunt the human mind. Each week, we will take you on a journey exploring the mysteries of the world, tackling tales of monsters, folklore, and the paranormal, and the thing that definitely lives under your bed. I'm Brandon. I think I'm John. Um, yeah, no, I, I probably. Well, I'm not. I'm not 100 percent <laughs> sure because, you know, I've been kind of like in this weird fugue state lately. So yeah. who knows? I, who knows, man? Today's today creature, I might be Gorgo. You might be Gorgo, Gorgo the Wise. Yes. Yeah. He's a wise. He is a wise and violent creature. <laughs> yeah, he's a lizard folk named Gorgo the Wise. Who? What class? What class? He, he was barbarian. He right? was a he was a barbarian, yeah. but his main stat was wisdom. Yeah, because <laughs> I thought it would be fun. Uh, so yeah. I made a barbarian with an extremely high wisdom stat. Yeah, um, we are for 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 the D and D crowd. We have more fun that pe- with people that try to make things creative. <laughs> yes, I would say almost ninety percent of our gameplay has not followed the actual rules of D and D. Well, like the, the the so they even say in the in the player's handbook that they're um, they are guidelines and feel free to modify it because it's about changing the game to fit the player group. So if you have yeah. mid maxers, that's fine. If you have people who try to get creative, that's fine. Just try to it, do, it's about do having whatever fun. feels good. It's about having fun at the end of the day. Yes, and I can't wait until I didn't sign an NDA, but there are things happening. With a game table, that will hopefully happen soon. Um, I'm very excited for for it this. Got pushed back a little bit uh, because um, Gary Gygax's son was getting well, a custom one, and they called me and they're like, "Hey, is it cool if, if we bump you in line?" And I was like, "Totally cool." I mean, let's be fair. Let's be fair. Mm-hmm. That's like the one extremely awesome way to get bumped. Yeah. Oh, right, yeah. like and I he would, wasn't I, like he wasn't a dick. Like, it wasn't like I need the table now. He, they they just said, "Hey, is it cool?" If and I said, yeah, totally cool. And the other thing is, I'll share information, but I have to wait till after GaryCon uh, in March before they reveal um, the new new types of tables and all that stuff. And the other nice thing is that there was a price bump that I'm not being affected by because I got in nice. uh, before the announcement. Nice. Yeah, nice. Um, so cryptids. <laughs> <laughs> I guess this show's about those. Yeah, I guess we can talk about them. This week's creature has inhabited its current region since 874 CE. It is humanoid in appearance. It resides in Iceland and is still seen today. Any guesses on what it could be? It's not the Hilda folk, is it? What the fuck? <laughs> well... It's literally who would know about the Hoda folk? Like they, there's, like you, I would expect you to guess elves or something, but I would not have ever thought anyone would have said. Uh, Hold, excuse nobody me. knows that word. Excuse me. Excuse yes? me. Excuse me. Yeah. Excuse me. Who do you think I am? That's. It's. Uh, I still think you would have like known what they were, but called them elves. Well, no, because uh, I've watched. I've watched several. Uh, Icelandic things involving Hilda folk. There was a very good. Um, so it's not. Oh shoot, I can't remember the name of the movie anymore. But it was about the the Holdra, which is like a form of Hilda folk. And regardless, okay. I, I'm 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 not gonna. So I I dropped the copy in the um broadcasted folder. It's titled mostly, mostly words, words I, I can't, can't say. say. Yeah, <laughs> I I picked that up pretty quick. Also, did you say 874 CE? Yes. Okay, I thought I heard 1874. No, no, but... 874. Okay. Right. Yeah. So the Holda folk, literally translated to hidden people, are a specific mm-hmm. type of elf. If you're picturing something 8 centimeters tall with pointy ears, and you're thinking of a flower elf, 60 centimeters, you're thinking of a house elf, and if you're thinking of Legolas, just stop. I always think of Legolas. Legolas, 
Th- I just time. thought of a joke I can't say. Uh, the Holder Folk are named because to those who can see them, they are in all regards human in appearance and dress. They are widely mm-hmm. regarded as protectors and mischief makers. Okay. That's mm-hmm. a lot of elves. That, yeah, that, that's most elves. And fair. That's most things. Unless they're explicitly evil, that's most things. Um, the protoforms of the hidden people date back to when the Vikings first set foot upon modern-day Iceland. Now, did these protoforms scan the Vikings? And is that why they look like Vikings? Do they look like amorphous blobs beforehand? Is that what happened? Sure. Okay, cool. I'm not so taking that mean... this bait. <laughs> You're not picking the bait? Okay. Okay. Wow. We all, that... we're, we're trying, we, we've we got a, a peace treaty. We're not going on any more of this Dinobot type oh, of stuff. I'm not going on about bi- Dinobot. I'm going on about the very, very well-known and appearing in more than just Beast Wars phenomena of proto protoforms. <laughs> You should do a uh, a Beast Wars uh, uh, bonus. Uh, I should deal. do any bonus episodes. <laughs> I gotta say, you you're kicking my butt on uh, on bonus episode content uh-huh. mainly because I get home and uh, I can only record like me reading bonus episodes when I'm home alone. Mm-hmm. So I have like two nights of the week that I can record bonus <laughs> episodes. But usually what ends up happening is I get home, I turn on Minecraft, and then I just mindlessly beat Woods for an hour. <laughs> is that a euphemism? It might be. It might be. It Terry might be. Gunnell, a professor of folklore, sociology, and anthropology at the University of Iceland, said to the Reykjavik grapevine that Holderfolk and Alfar undoubtedly arose from the same need. The Norse settlers had the Alfar, and the Irish slaves had the hill fairies, or the good people. Over time, they became two different beings, but really, they are two different sets of folklore that mean the same thing. I forgot that there were a lot of Irish slaves in Iceland, and that's like a huge thing. Yeah. No, it's a, th- it's a thing. They're, they're, oh, God. Yeah. <laughs> In a later documentary, Terry added that in the case of the Holdafolk, you've got legends. They've come up in stories about the hidden people which go right back to Viking times. We'll look at the development of the stories. We'll look at the development of the beliefs. It's not as if they see people hopping around rocks in ballet tutus shooting arrows at people. For them, it's a sense of the landscape being very alive. If you go and stand in a hot spring area like the geysers, the land speaks to you. It's alive. So now, if the land starts whispering sweet nothings into your ear Run. when you're in a hot Run. spring area like geysers, you're probably about to die. Yes. Yeah, not good. Not no. good at all. It's a geyser ghost. It's a guy. Yeah, you got to watch out for geyser ghosts. You got to watch out for the geyser ghosts. Because <laughs> you see, really, at the end of the day, geyser ghosts are just old man Jenkins trying to scare <laughs> teens away from his gold. Yeah. <laughs> it's all Jenkins! holograms. <laughs> it's all holograms don't worry about it though i mean do worry about it because that's boiling water and it will murder you yes very much so he actually went away for attempted murder for that caper oh yeah that, that's, that's the thing, thing about scooby-doo that that you missed out is when they press charges <laughs> yeah it, it's pretty bad um it's pretty bad and let me tell you i would not want to be on the jury selection for that that no. particular case because <laughs> I can guarantee that that would be, well, no, I don't know if that would be the most interesting trial ever or the most boring trial ever. <laughs> it's, it's hard to tell. <laughs> uh, at least to Terry, the Holder folk are a personification of nature. The hidden people are said to live within nature, literally inside of rocks and other natural formations. When asked how the Holder folk uh, may do so when they are human, Magnus Skarpindensen, the headmaster of the Icelandic elf school, I'll let that sentence sink in. Wait, I, I was not paying attention. Um, Magnus the Skarpindensen, Ice- the headmaster of the Icelandic elf school. I don't think this is a uh, nationally accredited school. I'm looking it up. <laughs> I did because I'm check. trying to figure out. I'm trying to fi- TripAdvisor. 
It's an actual place. It's, it's like on TripAdvisor. It's not an internet school. It's a guy with a building and lots of boxes um, and like cassette tapes of people that he recorded people telling him stories about elves. But he's a so literal believer. Yeah. Somebody, uh, the one of the top reviews on TripAdvisor because of course there's a TripAdvisor for this. Yeah. Definitely a unique experience. I gave it three stars simply because you'll either love it, love it or hate it. We went in <laughs> expecting elf stories and pancakes and the best bread, best bread in the world. We got lots of elf stories, and the mid-class break was definitely very yummy. I'm not sure if the bread was the best in the world, but we could definitely have to eat it all day. Plus, we were in a special session with only the three of us there. We got to take home leftovers. I actually brought the bed back to the U.S. with me. I wish they could have wrapped up some of the pancakes, too. I don't know what kind of spices they put in there, but I crave them fortnightly. <laughs> this person's from Maryland. <laughs> <laughs> they went to Iceland to an elf school and spoke directly with the headmaster and the majority of their review was about the pancakes <laughs> oh boy <laughs> oh, oh oh boy uh, apparently so happy. yeah apparently Magnus is not a great guy according to this <laughs> I- I'm gonna read a snippet uh which I guess there's a content warning of sexual harassment. Uh-oh. Um, okay. I, actually, I'm not going to read it. Just look up look up uh, the Icelandic L school on uh, TripAdvisor. Um, oh. One person said it was offensive. Uh, so I guess this is just a guy who likes to talk to people. Yeah, so they didn't show, at least in the documentary, they might have. I don't recall seeing an outside shot, but it looks a lot like a guy whose house is filled with elf uh, things, like books and just a room full of boxes that are cassette tapes of people telling him stories. Ooh, he hands out uh, diplomas to people. <laughs> oh, yeah. Yeah. Um, put, put they're that on in your like, resume. They're in, like, uh, uh, like, you know those... They're in these. It's basically like what I would put a D&D uh, character sheet in. Yeah. Pretty He's much. holding up a um, like a plastic sleeve for an eight and a half by eleven sheet of paper. This is the bard. Is it the bard? I like the bard yeah, class. There's it's the bard. Bombarded's a good podcast. It's a D and D podcast where all of them play bards, but they're also all musicians, so they play the actual music. And as they level up, they learn like, you know, they they learn like, oh, now you have the power of knowing minor chords, and then they write. Oh, you know, it's good. Um, but um, Magnus, the headmaster of the Icelandic Elf School. Uh, said that there are simply so many unanswered things in this case that we can't answer, we simply don't know. Knowledge of mankind hasn't come to that. This just occurs. They live in rocks. Um. <laughs> I'm trying to process what you just said. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um. Why not just break open the rocks? Oh, also, John, we're gonna get a lot into modern belief and why you can't break open the rocks. If they're human sized, <clears throat> what kind of rocks are they living in? There, listen, John. We simply can't answer. Knowledge of mankind hasn't come to that. Listen I, to Magnus. <laughs> but, but I have a, I have a fundamental problem. This just occurs. They live in rocks. I. I have a fundamental problem with just saying, <laughs> we can't understand it. It's elves. And then hand-waving it away and saying that this, yeah. is, this is fact. Yeah. Uh, this, I believe, shows an example of modern belief blending with historical and cultural belief. This begs the question of how does a country that in 2018, 78.76 of the population identify with a formal religious affiliation of one form of Christianity in another um reconcile their belief with elves so how, how... Uh, i'm not gonna throw shade but i'm gonna throw shade yeah <laughs> uh, oh god that reminds me yeah so you know the the famous uh the famous words of i'm not racist but yes my favorite one of my favorite jokes is um I'm not racist, but do my shoes look good? <laughs> I'm not racist, but I think it's a nice day. Yeah. Because yeah. <laughs> you know what? 
Here's the thing. You got to put the have... question in someone else's head like, wait a minute, how? Well, how is it's – Yeah. It just outlines the fact that no one has ever said, I'm not racist, but – And then the next words that came out of their mouth are anything but yeah. absolute <laughs> racist trash. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> uh. So the answer begins in the 10th century, just 126 years after the Norse set foot and bring with them Irish slaves who carried tales of the Alfar, traditional elves. The enforced Christianization of Iceland began. Originally, Irish monks set foot on the land of ice in 795. See, I, see, I, I, I knew I was going to be writing Iceland a lot, so I changed it to the land of ice. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Uh, mm-hmm. I mean, wait, but Brandon, Iceland's green. And Greenland's ice. Yeah, well... And more settlers came. The religions okay, yeah. got along well. Yeah, I don't know where to go, so I just finished the sentence. Yep. Um, in 1000 CE, Thorgir Lesjof Josvit Ningegori Thorgilisen, um, a law speaker who was pagan, announced to all the chieftains that all Icelanders were to be baptized, but the heathens could still worship Odin and the old gods in secret. Are you looking oh, up a pronunciation? The, yeah, oh, this is the guy, this is the guy who was, uh, like, the leader who was like, yeah, let's just tell him we're Christian. Yeah, yeah, this is, I didn't, when I went into this, didn't realize that it was the guy until I got here, and I was like, oh, shit, it's the guy! Yeah, there's, I oh, can't wait, say I, his name. Uh, are you listening to how it's actually said? <laughs> There's no way that my mouth can make those syllables happen. <laughs> oh, yeah. No, it's it's gonna get rougher from from here. It just gets worse. <laughs> he also allowed for the old practices of infanticide and the consumption of horse to be continued. Uh, on the spot, they were all baptized in cold water. But he said that. All people from the nother, northern and southern quarters were to be baptized in Reykjalog in uh, Lord, Lord Guller. Uh, so there's an Icelandic pronunciation guide on here that makes literally no sense to me. Yeah, I, listen, I tried at first and then just gave up and figured I'll try to read it on the spot and hope it goes well. Because it, it is I, getting rough. I did figure out what some of the the words that make up other words mean through trying to figure that out. Um, and I think I'll, in a, in a little bit, get to that. You um, do. Now, here is where I would like to say that after listening to hundreds of episodes of The Dollop, the thing I find the funniest is that the meaning of Icelandic people's names and how they literally name things. Anytime I say anyone's name, assume that one part or the other means either Thor, Eagle, or Son of. Eagle! Eagle! I am I am the son of Thor's Eagle Thor. Yeah, that's. I should find what, what episode of the Dolph that was. That was so good. Uh, so far, the landmarks we have, Reykjavik, which means Bay of Smoke. Okay. Rajalog. Which means Bay of Hot Springs, right? So that means that mm-hmm. Ray means uh, Bay now. So we're, we're connecting some dots. Mm-hmm. Um, Unless it that... means something else. Maybe it means of. Maybe. And, what uh, if it no, means jaw, of? Jaw is of. So Ray, Ray is Bay. Jaw is of. And then Log is in the second one, um, uh, Hot Springs. And I guess that means Vic would mean smoke. Because they're like literally just putting words together. Mm, okay. Um. And that, by the way, is where the Northerners were baptized. Okay. Um, and that is located in Loglarder, which means pool valley. So log could also mean pool instead of bay, but it's still a body of water. So we're learning. We're learning how to read Icelandic. Here's the thing. Yes. I've already forgotten everything. Uh, yeah. Yeah. Me too. I'm, I have no mind for language. <laughs> Shortly after, in 1016 CE, the then King Olaf II abolished the mandate, yet the institutional framework was set. For 200 years, churches were... <laughs> yeah. uh, I, so, my brain went to two different things simultaneously. Yes. Um, one of them was League of Legends, which has a character named Olaf. Uh-huh. Um, the other was... 
uh, Electric Bugaloo 2. Oh, God. Um, and then now there's a third one that's popped in, yes. and it's the snowman from Frozen. So now I'm imagining <laughs> a Viking man uh, wearing a uh, – uh, like a, a Saturday Night Fever style dance, yeah. Uh, that uh, suit with a Olaf pin on the lapel. No, that's correct. Yeah, that's okay. right. That's, there, I think that's what Olaf too looks like. Yeah. Um, for two hundred years, churches were erected in the Commonwealth, and the first clergymen began to arrive. Uh, the momentum continued to current day, but the gist is that for quite a while, the beliefs of Christianity and the Norse and Irish existed together and bled into each other. You gotta watch out for them Irish beliefs, though. You gotta watch out. I say that having a grandfather whose father and mother may or may not have been involved in the Irish Mafia. Yeah, no, my great-grandfather was a spud. A spud? Yeah, a tato. A tato? A tato. That's a problem. Yeah. All this leads to a common story that I have seen many accounts of in doing research for this episode. It is said that God would visit Eve in the Garden of Eden, and Eve would want to have all of her children clean in his presence. Knowing that God was arriving soon, Eve hid her unwashed children, but God knew better and said to her, What you have hid from me, I will hide from mankind. And thus the hidden people were born. Hmm. Okay. So, so that's how they're they're mm -hmm. exactly humanoid in appearance. They're just hidden because they're dirty. Mm hmm. Uh-huh. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> okay, continue. okay i have a bad habit of reading ahead yeah. another clue that i believe points to the whole of folk being linked uh to a blended piece of folklore is from a paper called how icelandic legends reflect the prohibition on dancing i, I can uh, try this i can try this one okay go for it how Stella got her groove back uh <laughs> sure that that's that seems about because you know what here's the fact yeah. of the matter Brandon uh -huh. we can try and pronounce Al Heider Gunnlöstur whatever um that's better than I could have done uh we could try pronouncing that yeah but for the listeners how Stella got her group back is somehow more accurate to what it means <laughs> than what we just said yeah. <laughs> Uh, when the people think elf, we may frequently think of legless or a group of people dancing in a ring. Apparently, the early clergy imposed a ban on dancing as it could encourage people's baser instincts. You gotta you watch know, out for that twerking. Once the once the, once on the macarena, it's all orgies. That's that's how it goes. Hey, I mean, look at daggering. What's daggering? <gasps> Is you that don't like, know it. You don't know daggering? No. No. Brand okay, so Brandon Brandon not knowing what daggering does is it probably did one of the whitest things possible. He basically channeled Mac from It's Always Sunny in Philadelphia <laughs> when he does like his dance moves. Oh that's daggering. I just yeah, Googled it. You can uh I, we're not gonna link this in the show notes. Um but I think people have gotten their necks snapped from daggering. Yeah. Uh, it so was so I don't know it as daggering. I know it as Sarah de Bunda. Okay. Which, which, and then I guess people got tired of saying it in, in uh, Brazil, Brazil, uh, Portuguese and just called it daggering. But Sarah de Bunda, I learned about in college. <laughs> um, for, uh, being told about it, by the way, I was told there, someone was like, we were, we were in architecture and this guy was like, hey, uh, you ever heard of Sir da Bunda? And I was like, nah. And then that was the rest of the classes, just watching those videos. Um, oh, so you just basically watch softcore pornography. It was not soft. Oh, no. So I, I just looked up the article, the, the Wikipedia thing. And I just wanted to read this particular bit because I want to see your facial reaction. I don't know okay. if this will make it into the final episode. Uh also, Jamaican doctors have warned of the dangers of daggering after having many cases of damaged penis tissue. 
<laughs> the condition can result in permanent damage and therefore must be taken seriously. Jamaican doctors assert that those trying to replicate the powerful moves of daggering in the bedroom can end up with dramatic injuries. They say the incidence of broken penises has increased in the past year, <laughs> according to an article in the Jamaican Star. <laughs> hey, uh, usually I don't like banning things, but I guess maybe, what if, what if, people were doing an early form of daggering in Iceland and the church stepped in to save them? Hey, uh, hey, this might be weird, but can you sign my cast? <laughs> Where, sure, where is it? Uh, <laughs> hey, hey, Doc, can you just add it, add a little extra cast? <laughs> now you know I can't do that. The cast won't be won't be protective enough. <laughs> It'll add too much weight. Oh, uh, by the 18th century. The old Icelandic dances had disappeared, but through oral tradition, the legends of the dances had become associated with the elves and lived on. Man, them elves are horny. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Well, I mean, if, if watching the time I was resurrected as a slime has taught me anything. Yes. We'll stop. <laughs> we'll stop. <laughs> The first written account uh, of this was in the 15th century by Jarlman's saga Og Hermans, uh, in which dancing is used by elves as entertainment. Like most normal humans. Yeah, like most <laughs> I didn't think about that. But yeah, that's pretty normal, isn't it? Yeah, yeah it's, it's probably like the least strange thing I've ever heard. Yeah. <laughs> Through these stories, the elves took a stance with the common people over authorities. A modern belief in these hidden people is strong. Depending on which survey you read, between 54 and 70% of the current Icelandic population believe in the Holdafolk, with 55% believing within the range of possible, likely, and certain, or certain in a 2006 survey. The other op uh, options were unlikely and impossible and no opinion. Mm-hmm. So we have a majority of people believe in the Holdo folk. Okay. Uh, a short documentary uh, produced by a third-year student at PB Music School in association with the Middlesex University of London touched on these modern beliefs. While she did interview Terry and Magnus as well as some locals um, and a local Holdo folk guide, I found her brief interview with one man named Bjark uh, who is one of Terry's friends, and a man named Bjarni drinking uh, what was implied to be whiskey and coke in public to be an unironically the most enlightening, uh, as it showed what I think is one of the most honest opinions of the common person. So, um... Oh, also, did I don't, I don't know if I wrote this, but um, Bjarni did not... Bjarni and Bjark did not have cars, so there's a shot of just her set between... These two big Icelandic dudes, and one of them's just day drinking in public because <laughs> they had to drive to a landmark. <laughs> it was pretty good. Oh, God. Um, <laughs> I just want to, like, point out. So I'm assuming third year music, music school, is that, in Middlesex? So uh, university, yeah, yeah. university in London, isn't that technically... Like high school for us. Uh, so I middle thought... six is, is a place. University is like college, but it's it's well, PB Music School. So I believe it's a, it is not directly associated with, um, the University of London. But they were working with the University of London for this project. I think it might actually be an online, uh, course. I'm not sure. Uh, yeah. Uh, it's called Point Blank Music School. Yeah. Okay, so this might – so I was like – I'm imagining a, a high school student basically just, like, sitting between two Icelandic dudes. No, no. She was probably um, maybe a little younger than us, you know, uh, 20s. She's in the 20s, if I had to guess. Okay. Gotcha. Uh, after getting a ride to a landmark, uh, as he did not have a car, uh, this individual said that as a child, there was a moss-covered rock outside of his house. He used to pull the moss off the rock. 
but his stepfather found out and scolded him. He said that the elves would be angry, and on one night in a dream, the elf princess came to him in a dream and gave him uh, her forgiveness. He believed forgiveness. that forgiveness. <laughs> he he did quotes. <laughs> forgiveness. He he believes that they have been watching out for him ever since. <laughs> mm-hmm. Um, this touches on another aspect of the hold of folk, which is that they may speak to you in your dreams. So how many uh so many how many hold of folk have the properties of succubi i <laughs> i know where you're going i don't think they do there are other stories of the hold of folk visiting people in their dreams but they were all um either they like damaged the natural environment and were scaring them or they were saying something about hey they will protect them uh from that point forward mm-hmm. i'll yeah. they'll show you some protection don't worry about it oh god <laughs> When asked how we would know that they are elves and not humans, given their description, Bjarni said that... So how would we know? How would we know they were elves and not humans? Yeah, that's that's the question. Oh, I see. That's the so question. they could just be amongst us. Uh, yeah, yeah. Therefore, therefore I'm, uh, but when people say, oh, there's elves, it's just a nonsense. No one sees elves today. But how could we know? You go every day to a supermarket. You meet the thousands of people. Yeah. You know nothing about them. Maybe that's half true. of them are elves. <laughs> and... According to records, there are only 300,000 people in Iceland. 320,000, something like that. Yep. But our consuming is like we were one million. Okay. So, so that can't we'll be explanation. <laughs> <laughs> I like that. So, maybe that's just people are terrible. Maybe people are terrible. Maybe he shops at the world's largest supermarket. <laughs> yeah, if I, if I ever see thousands of people at the supermarket, that's a lot. Yeah, that's even when, like, we know there's going to be a lot of snow. There's not that many people in the supermarket. Oh, God. I I would hate to go to Hannaford with thousands of people. Yeah. I think there's only, like, ten checkout counters. That's, like, uh, it's already bad enough. Like, that means there's, like, 30 people there most days. Yeah. And that's already already too many people to go on. Yeah. No, that's too many people. And the other thing is that the Hannaford I go to... There's, um, I'm going to say five to eight checkout counters to express and the rest are self checkouts, but no one mm-hmm. uses the self checkouts. So it takes forever to go in line because they're not all manned. There's only three or four cashiers yeah. that they have. So it takes so long. Well, the problem with self checkouts at Hannaford is there's produce and that's a whole thing. It's yeah, exactly. Like, that's why no one I, uses it. I'd rather, I'd rather just go to the, like, usually I like the self checkout. But if yeah. I'm dealing with produce, I go to the manned one. Well, I always go to the the one where there's a a, a real person there. Um, yeah. But I also do all my shopping at night on weekdays. To well, make that's sure the best that time to do it. There's as few people as possible. Like, you know, it'll be like, okay, it's uh, it's Tuesday and it's eight o'clock, so that means it's time to go grocery shopping. Because then I've got the store to myself. The plights of not wanting to deal with people. I went shopping on a weekend the other day, and I was like, we need a plague. We need a new plague. It's just <laughs> just people, like a whole family standing in the dead center middle of an aisle so you can't pass them. And they're like, you just stand there and just shoot just eye daggers. They shoot them eye daggers, and they don't move because it's like, I can't. You've got two shopping carts side by side that takes up the whole aisle, and you all are just having a casual conversation. Get the fuck out of here. We need a plague. Um, you say that, but that's more, that's more likely than, that's more likely than I want to admit. Cause like measles that, is coming back, Brandon. Yeah. I was just going to say, that's the only good thing about the, uh, anti-vaxxers is that there will be fewer people in the supermarkets and that really is beneficial to me. Yeah. That's, that's one way of putting it. <laughs> Yeah, yeah. Which, by the way, it's there. There's, it's measles, and there's another one that we've got a lot of coming back. Like one that was almost gone for good, and then now there's just outbreaks. Let's, 
let's not make me sad. Yeah. <laughs> I'm already sad enough. There are four Icelandic holidays considered to have a special connection with the hidden people. New Year's Eve. It is believed that on the last day of the year, the Holda folk move to new locations. It is traditional to leave candles in windows to aid the hidden people in giving them light to help find a new home. Okay. The 13th night, which begins on New Year's Eve and ends 13 days later, Icelanders uh, say that uh, say goodbye to mystical creatures such as elves and trolls. There are bonfires held throughout the country while the elves and the Icelanders dance together before saying goodbye until the next Christmas. This celebration is known elsewhere as Epiphany Day. Okay. Midsummer's Night. It is said that on this night, if you sit at a crossroads where all paths lead to a different church, elves will try to seduce you with food and drink. Also, cows can talk. See, that's what I'm talking about. There's that succubus behavior. <laughs> talking cows. What's talking cows. And Christmas Night. Beyond that, there are more contemporary beliefs in the hold of folk. Uh, as mischief makers and natural protectors, um, they frequently interfere with road work. So that, that's that's more or less all the holidays. And going to Christmas because it's all the typical Christmassy stuff. Mm-hmm. They're Christmas elves. Also, the Hilda folk get real dirty on Christmas night. They get they get high on nog, and you do not want to see the streets afterwards. Mm-mm. It is not great. There's, it's, it's covered in something. We'll just leave it at that. It's co- <laughs> it's covered in <laughs> there, there's the cars plastered in fake eyelashes. Don't ask why or how. They weren't even wearing fake eyelashes. No, that's why. That's the ask. weirdest part. <laughs> yeah. Open toed clogs. Beyond that, there are more contemporary beliefs. Bur- bur- <laughs> you doing all right there? Yeah. Beyond that, there are more contemporary beliefs in the Holda folk. As Mischief May... I already read that line. Ignore. I said it. I may even edit that out. But no, I doubt said it. I'll edit that out. I won't. That's the thing. Whenever I say I do, I don't. Mm-hmm. Um, one of the more famous cases uh, is on a road near Alfal, literally translated to Elf Hill. Alf for Elf. I'm assuming all is part of the word hill. There's uh, also no cats that live on that hill. There are no cats. Because uh, the elf ate them all. The <laughs> How long has it been since Alf was on TV? Uh, give me a second. Will anyone get that joke? I So here's the fun thing. I uh, 1990 was the last episode. Um, it was in syndication for 102 episodes. Holy crap. Yeah, so, so that's a... Uh... That's a 29-year-old uh I've uh, never reference. seen an episode. I've seen a couple of reruns like All I know is he's twice. back in pod form. Is he back? Form. In pod form. <laughs> Actually, uh, what? 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 <laughs> so there's a reboot in development at Warner Brothers TV. That doesn't sound like it should have got greenlit, but okay. Uh, it was, this article is from, uh, 2018, August 1st. So recent. Yeah. Pretty recent. Uh, in the 1930s, a road was slated to go through, uh, the hill, which in turn, uh, was to be demolished. Construction was stopped due to a series of issues attributed to the elves. The machines were breaking. Tools would go missing. Two large drills that were going to be used to go through the hill broke. Eventually, the workers refused to go near the hill with the tools, and the road was routed around the hill. Alf Hall is now a protected site. Mm-hmm. A more recent event, Arne Johnson, uh, a member of the Icelandic parliament, flipped his SUV off a cliff, yet did not sustain any serious injuries. He attributed a group of elves living in a boulder near where he crashed for saving his life. Mm -hmm. Later, a road is going to be constructed through the site, um, but he called John's daughter, I'll touch on that in a bit, uh, to confirm whether or not elves lived in the rock. I have no children. (laughs) 
she confirmed that three generations of elves lived within that rock and that they would agree to their home being moved as long as it was on grass as they wanted to raise sheep and it, that it had a waterfront view. The 30-ton boulder was moved near Arnie Johnson's house. Hmm. Oh. All right. Sure. <laughs> Why not? Yeah. <laughs> Why not? I don't care. Something that, that stood out to me was that they raised sheep, so that me implies in addition to uh, hold a folk, the hidden people, there are, I don't know hold how to say sheep. sheep, but hold a sheep. Yeah, they are the hidden sheep. <laughs> Maybe this is the closest we'll get to Transformers in our lifetime. Maybe. <laughs> the uh, Hrovnir uh, is an activist group that fights for the rights of the elves and frequently protests construction activities. I love your face right now. Why? Oh, I... Television actress John Steeter, I'm assuming that's how you say the name. I didn't look it up. I didn't bother. Um, is a member of this group who also operates an elf sanctuary and does not like how the construction unnecessarily displaces the elves and fears the repercussions. Not everyone can see the elves, but John Steeter is a seer. She claims that one site contains a very important elf church, which is connected to other churches via light energy. I still love your face. <laughs> Half of the point of this podcast is that it's like a back and forth banter, but that broke me. Yeah. That broke me. I can't, I can't process anything anymore. Yeah. Like there, there was like about 10 parts of that statement that you just read that all like, <laughs> oh, like it all it's a lot it's a lot there's a lot of information in that one paragraph there's a lot and to process <laughs> i don't even know how to begin to just like begin to dissect it like yeah i don't like it's one of those situations where there is so much like so much of the evidence in the discussion is interleaved with itself and interleaved with culture that it's like, how do I even begin to <laughs> process this thing? Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> One particularly interesting case to you and I involves Icelanders approaching a NATO base in 2004 to search for elves as they were concerned that the Americans would be disturbing the hold folk. Eventually the company uh, involved hired a government expert to certify that there were no cultural landmarks in the area. Well, this company, that's, yeah, that's fine, but <laughs> when it says cultural landmarks, I assume you mean hold a folk, hold a folk hold boulders, folk. hold a folk landmarks. Yeah, it's okay. hold, hold hold a folk boulders. Um, this company was Alcoa, one of the largest aluminum producers in the United States, and if that sounds familiar to you, that's because we have a facility just off the waterfront. I visited Alcoa a few times. They let me play with their titanium fastener pulling gun near a train. Um, it was fun. You or your parents may know it as Huck, which has the best company slogan ever, Proud as Huck, um, and more recently they may be known as Arconic. Uh, they're a, they're a great company. Uh, they gave me pizza, and uh, I also heard some fun stories from some of the employees who worked there uh, when I was at my previous job uh, when this event occurred. Uh, nothing about elves, but my friend uh, was a manager there, <clears throat> and he noticed that one guy kept stealing his candy, so he, it was really gummy bears. So he replaced them mm -hmm. all with laxative gummy bears. But the guy kept stealing the gummy bears, the laxative candy, but it, it never mentioned it. So my, my buddy, who I, I still work with, just kept replacing the candy because he thought it was funny. No. And it was much later that he found out that the, the candy thief was seeing doctors who thought he had a rare form of diabetes because of his, <laughs> because of his, his butt troubles. So, one, hilarious. Yeah. Two... <laughs> That might technically be assault. <laughs> I mean, he's a candy thief. What yeah, but drawer? I don't think I don't think biochemical warfare is the answer to candy thievery. <laughs> <laughs> you 
you do not know this person. <laughs> it is an answer to everything for him. <laughs> that makes me concerned. <laughs> uh, yeah. No, probably, as it should. Um, the Holder folk are so embedded into the culture that the Icelandic Road and Coastal Administration has a Salad Fingers style animation informational video to help tourists on the roads before they arrive. His name is Elphis. He is wearing a Metallica shirt. Uh, I will say that it is an amazing video, and it does contain some actually good information, just like the uh, that German forklift training video. Um, and after seeing that the road administration seems pretty chill, uh, I decided to reach out, and I did receive a reply from the IRCA head of communications only a few hours later, which one um, I was very stoked about because they are like an administration of a foreign government, and they got back like super fast and they're super chill. So That's pretty it's, cool. Yeah, it's cool. I, I was just happy that they got back to me that, that quickly. Um I'm happy they replied at all, because I can't imagine contacting any place here and getting a reply from them, especially if I'm like, hey, how is your roads and elves? They, they'd they probably just ignore me. Um, yeah. But they replied that this issue does not affect our work. We do consider these things as cultural her heritage here in Iceland. I will send you a paper on these things uh, in the past. It entails all but one incident, which was in 2015, where we moved a rock that uh, some consider to be hold a folks chapel uh we did that due to the cultural heritage it was manageable and the rock was a great formation it was in the way of the road and when we moved it to the side of the road um it is now with similar lava formations um i also received a five page essay from them entitled uh the icelandic road uh, Administration and the Belief in Elves by Victor Arnar Ifgolson, Chief of Publishing Unit of the IRCA. And I found a copy online, so I'm going to post it here because the copy they sent me was um, uh, a protected copy, which means I can't copy and paste or print or anything. It's a view, or literally view only. You can't even copy and paste out of it. Okay. Um, but some, some short uh, excerpts from that that give some uh, examples are... Uh, that in the 1970s, preparations got underway for a new construction project. Road number 75, uh, so Sauter Croxbrout. Uh, sauerkraut. Over, yeah, sauerkraut. Sa sauerkraut and Bratz Road in the uh, Skalfendinger uh, district of northern Iceland. The decision was made uh, to have the road built over a troll scarred, the Trolls Pass, and it was necessary mm -hmm. to detonate some rocks in the pass in order to lower the level of the road. The road was designed by an engineer from the ICERA and a team of local workers. Under the guidance of the service uh, area supervisor, it was to complete the project. <clears throat> uh, it so happened that the medium, Hafstein Bjornsson, held a seance in Sauerkraut during uh, which the message appeared that the rocks in Trollskad must not be detonated as the site was cursed. This came uh, rather as a surprise because the plans for the road were not known to many people and were not considered something people would talk about. But uh, yeah. But if you're pulling a medium in to do a seance... No, so this, the, the medium did a seance um, without like it, on their own, so they were not contacted to do a seance. Or at least that's how the how it read. It cut a bunch of parts out of this to make it shorter. But it read I don't know. As I if just the townspeople got a medium out of concern, and the, she held a seance and said, "Whoa, there's going to be a curse." It just feels like they paid someone to say, "Don't build a road here." Yep. Uh, to cut a long story short, the road was completed without any rocks being detonated. If you drive over the pass, it is rather obvious uh, that the lie of the road is unnatural. The road. Uh, being a testimony to the incident in which the ICERA's workers did n their utmost to comply with the wishes of the seers. There have been no serious accidents on the road since it was laid, and some people believe that the elves protect the road users as a reward for the consideration shown to them. Okay. Yep. There are several other stories in the document, including one that involves the death of 90,000 fish. But what? I'm not, yeah, <laughs> but I'm not going to read 
just I'm not just going to read a whole essay. I did uh, include a link for anyone who's interested. Um, let's just say that one thing led to another. Ninety thousand fish died. Um, judging by the content not pertaining to the elves. It seems that the government understands the cultural belief in these creatures and is committed to working with people uh, and to reach a mutual agreement to the extent that they will uh, eat the cost of moving boulders and rerouting roads. It also is very clear that they do not appreciate the locals telling workers that their families are now cursed and about what kind of misfortune is sure to befall their loved ones. This is basically... So there's a story about uh, the, like, transcontinental rate car race yeah. and it reminds me of this story because during like this race in like the early 1900s yeah uh people would like shoot at the cars and like oh, yeah. purposely ruin their their uh race times and stuff like that and just yeah. mess with them because they don't like they didn't like having cars driving near them yeah yeah, yeah. and that sounds an awful lot like this. Yeah. Uh, in one of the stories, a worker was not sleeping due to the continual nightmares based upon what the locals were saying is going to happen to him. And another uh, construction was completely stopped for months because the whole workforce was in fear. Yeah, it's... I kind of understand that. Yeah. Uh, reading this put in perspective uh, what some of the other stories I read had said, and I think that... Uh, some of the trouble was caused by the unintentional harassment of workers. I don't think that either side was intentionally making threats to harm the workers or their families, or that the workers felt they were being threatened by the townsfolk, but this additional context showed me that there is something I was unaware of before, and that there is a kind of weird foggy line in between belief and bullying. Because I don't think they were saying, we are going to kill your family but they were saying yeah. and may have actually believed if you do this, the elves will kill your family. But at the same time... And, like, and in a country where like over half the people believe yeah. to some extent that they are real. At the same time, it's kind of like not a, a great look for the people. No, no, not at all. It's, it, it's, it's not a great look. It's Yeah, it's not... Uh, <laughs> it's, it's, it's not... It's not a nice thing to do. No, no. Um, I also would like to to point out that the uh, essay and the email I received uh, from the uh, Coastal Ed and Road Administration of Iceland did not once mention that the government had any reluctance to halt work and to speak with locals or to hire seers and reroute or move road work uh, and boulders. This is something that I do respect and something I... Uh, I think I would have less patience for. Uh, I would as I well. Was. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> um, also, I contacted the ICRA and shared my interaction. So uh, please, if you're listening, don't. Just don't. I, there's You can see exactly what the same essay they'll share with you is in, in our ad copy. Um, you can see I linked to the, the uh, Elphis video on it shared exactly what they wrote to me in their email including the 2015 incident that's not included in the essay so just don't they've they've they're they're probably busy and have stuff to do yeah um, like like um build roads. but hey yeah here's the thing you asked a, a a foreign government agency for help yeah and you got a reply pretty quickly i messaged a local library for research help and i still have yet to hear back from them <laughs> <laughs> so good yeah actually for you. I, I checked the um from when i sent the email because i sent it at night to when i received the reply i estimate that if they start work at eight they got to me within two hours of having started working jeez yeah it was it was a longer time it is between when i sent it and when they it was more than two hours but if you like check when when i sent it it would have been nighttime for them they would have been at home so they yeah. got back to me like right away which, which I, I i do appreciate and also do check out the elfis video because it's uh i started watching it while you were talking dude, that's you... part of the reason why i was so quiet it's uh it's it's pretty good <laughs> it is pretty good i do like the mentalica yeah uh thing that they've got going on yeah so <laughs> that's pretty good 
it's pretty great. Yeah, I don't hate it. I don't hate it. It's a little <laughs> bit it's a little bit weird and not my particular animation style, but I appreciate it for what it is. Yeah, yeah. So yeah. Oh jeez. Um <laughs> Oh, I, I I don't know I don't know what to say to be totally honest because it's it's hard it's hard because I don't want to be like well your beliefs are dumb you're dumb everything you said is dumb it, but it's, it's hard it, it'd be one thing if it was a a minority uh, yeah, of people it's... like a, a smaller portion yeah. but to the extent that over fifty percent like it's a majority um. Some put it a little bit less. Some put it a little bit more. But, to, like, I just... Uh. It's also one of those things where I think about stuff like this, and then I remember that in uh, South Korea, people know. And when I say no, I mean in the they know, as in they say they know sense. Yeah. That uh, if you leave a fan on in a closed room, you'll die. Oh, fan death. Yeah. Yeah. So... It's one of those things, just because a lot of people believe something and know something to be true doesn't necessarily mean it's true. Because there's a lot of people who believe that not vaccinating is a good idea. There's a lot of people who think that the Earth is flat. And there's a lot of people who think uh, 9-11 was an inside job. So... Yeah, well, I think that's why they they keep calling it a cultural belief, is that yeah, it, like they're, they're like they're not gonna say it's real, but they'll say it's a cultural belief. Um, yeah, but it's just surprising. The, it's a, such a huge number of the population, at and the, the same... extent to which some people believe it, where they're like, yeah. "Listen, anyone could be an elf. You don't know. You don't know. They drive cars. They look just like you and me. There's a thousand people in my supermarket." Yeah, it's it's at the end of the day, I as far as some beliefs go, I don't think that the belief in Hilda Folk is a harmful belief. Because it doesn't cause anyone to not seek proper medical attention. Um, for the most part, it doesn't harm anyone. Uh, and if anything, it's just a greater level of respect for the natural world. So, It is the only negative I could think of has to do with... Um, so if, you're, if you live there and your, a portion of your wages goes towards the government in which they yeah. feel like it loses resources. I wouldn't want my money being put towards um, moving, you know, spending all the money to bring in the equipment and pay the workers to move a boulder because an actress on TV said she can see elves and that there's light shooting out, connecting it to elf churches. Yeah. I wouldn't want my money going <laughs> like, yeah, it's, it's a, slightly tricky one yeah i i you know less tricky if less people believed in it yes i you know here's my uh my bold stance yeah i'm not going to say anything more (laughs) (laughs) because i don't know what else to say (laughs) so anyways (laughs) um as always, if you uh, want to get in contact with us, our website is cryptopediacast.com. On Instagram, we're at cryptopediacast. On Twitter, we're at cryptopediacast as well. Um, if you want to email us, cryptopediacast at gmail.com or us at cryptopediacast. And as always, all these links that we're about to say are on the Cryptopediacast website. Uh, we have a Patreon, and as a special thanks, I think it's about time that we thank our jackalopes again, which currently is clay sinclair so clay thanks sinclair. again clay um let's see let me just make sure there's no other jackalopes nope okay oh, he 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 uh commented on the uh that yeah, picture i, I posted in the group he, he does appreciate your transformers he does most people uh... <laughs> i need to do some organization i have to actually uh cycle the collection soon because um i've had i've had the animated shelf on display for too long so i need to switch it with another display okay because i'm i am that kind of person where i have way too many that i can't display the entirety of the collection at once uh (laughs) 
as always, though, um, if you're interested in supporting the show, we don't do uh, ads for the show. Um, we mainly do support the running the content through Patreon. So if you like what you hear, uh, we've got three tiers. We've got Hoop Snakes, Hodags, and Jackalopes. Uh, Hodags, you start to get some re- rewards. You get a PDF of the show notes um, and all of our research. And then Jackalopes get mostly Brandon produced special content. <laughs> Eventually, yeah. I'll do something. I, I've really... got some ideas, but... yeah. Shoot. I yeah. like the uh, the new one, the the new style. It's the 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 one that's not a lovers lane, the the lily field lane. Oh yeah, uh, we gotta. I gotta upload that soon. I'll probably upload it mm, soon. Yeah. So. <laughs> like, is it I, a creative I, I don't know. It's it's hard because I need to know. Like I don't. Did I forget to upload last week's episode? Oh shit. Um. I just re- I forgot to upload I forgot to upload episode twenty three. Oh no! <laughs> like the PDF? Yeah. Ah. Uh. But uh, yeah. So, um, what else? Yeah, it's a good thing I was looking at the the Patreon. The Patreon. Yeah. I, <laughs> the, the story behind that of why I forgot to do it was I had I had jury duty the week that we released episode twenty two. Yeah, jury duty. Yeah, and it was. I just totally forgot. So <laughs> sorry. <laughs> oh. I guess I guess you could take over while I do this. Before okay. I um, I don't remember if we said that, so I'll I'll say um, uh, Facebook group. We post all kinds of stuff uh, uh, throughout the week as we uh, do research or find stuff or supporting material or, or videos related to the episodes. Review, review, subscribe, share with your friends, alienate your enemies. Um, be harder to talk to with people. Uh, mm-hmm. Share share this. Send your monsters or requ- monster requests or monster stories, creepy pasta or cryptid pasta to be read. And if you'd like, you could find me on Instagram at donkey underscore hands. My website is boyerb.com. My email is brandon. That's b r a n d o n at cryptopediacast dot com. And my Twitter is at crypto brandon. Capital C, capital B. Um, I got a bunch of stuff too. I guess. <laughs> um, my Instagram is at mu2057, which is now, I guess, a dead mall blog. Um, <laughs> my Twitter is at JF Dunham, where I've got some hot takes. I'm not sure if it's released at the time of this, but I am working on a revised version of John Dunham Games. Oh, uh, nice. Which I'll, I'll add it in the show notes if it shows up. Mm. Um, and if you want to email me, john at cryptopediacast.com. Um, our art is done by uh, Tom Hill. His Instagram is at Thomas Michael Hill. His website is greatglorico.com. And you can email him at tommikehill at gmail.com. As always, I'm forgetful John. I'm Brandon. And uh, things things have gotten really weird. <laughs> Then one night, in a dream, the elf princess came to him dressed in blue with a gold belt on her waist and gave him her forgiveness. He said that since then, the elves have watched over him like guardians. It was a great story and Bayak got pretty emotional about it. The only thing is I don't know how much of that was to do with the Coca-Cola he was drinking.